um, with the first question uh, straight away. Um, so let me minimize this. Ah, okay. So the question is, uh, what when designing a bunker for an accelerator, what are four conservative assumptions that are made? Maybe if you guys can turn on your camera, uh, it will be easy for me to, um, you know, make an eye contact. Uh, I don't know, is this then possible? And you can put your ideas that what are the four uh, design bunkers. If you have read uh, NCRP 151, uh, then it's pretty much easy to answer this question. So what are those four conservative, at least minimum of four conservative assumptions that we are, we are making while uh, designing a bunker? Anyone can jump in. I mean. Okay, sir. Assalamualaikum. My name is Usman. Or uh, uh, the four assumptions would be uh, first of all uh, we we'll use zero point zero two millisievert dose rate per week dose rate for uh, uh, that is the public dose rate and uh, um, secondly would be uh, that we will add uh, uh, HVLs uh, one TBL or two TBL for the uh, uh, scantry and uh, primary leak uh, radiations and uh, yeah, do mere mind mein fauri taur pe aayi hai baaki iske alawa jo hai na ground ko add karna chahiye to can you can you just uh, think of what you said 2 millisievert per week or 0 0.02 millisievert per week jo ek public dose hai wo aur iske alawa jo additional hum karte hain leakage uh, barrier mein aur scantry barrier mein jo addition karne ke liye jo hum kuch karte hain 1 tbl additional add karte hote hain to ye do conservative assumptions mere mind mein fauri taur pe aayi hai all right anyone else hamid you wanna when you wanna add something yeah. uh, Haringor, uh, I will add uh, the energies matter. Uh, what uh, Linux we are installing, first of all, then uh, uh, workload, as Usman said, and uh, the question I is, think I think maybe you guys are not maybe understanding what but the question is. There we are making a conservative approach while doing the shielding calculations, a very conservative approach. So can you list some of them, the conservative approach what we are adopting, which really on the clinical, on the on the on the real ground is not happening basically. Assalamu alaikum. Ashit Shivani National Hospital. Is me to jo NCRP ki jo report hai na 151. To usme unho ne ek two source ka bataya wa tha. Or mere khayal se two source rule ka ek assumption. Or iske alawa मेरे ख्याल से एक और एग्जांपल जो है सर वो जो बीम है वो वो शॉर्टेस्ट पाथ फॉलो करता है तो मुझे दो ये याद आ रहे हैं और सर एक कोई हेड लीकेज से था आई डोंट रिमेंबर इट एग्जैक्टली बट इट वाज 0.2 और समथिंग इस तरह कुछ था मिली स्टीवर्ड पर इस तरह सर ये दो मुझे याद आ रहे एग्जैक्ट तीसरा मुझे एग्जैक्ट याद नहीं आ रहा सो बीम फॉलो द शॉर्टेस्ट पाथ and dusra jo tha sir wo two source rule method tha ncrp report 151 reference all right uh okay just one few clarifications when, uh, when, when whenever you are saying uh, something you should use the right terminology so two source rule okay ncrp says two source rules one is the leakage one is your scatter so uh so something like that something like that don't say like in the exam it means you okay. have a superficial knowledge of something they will get confused if you are ref referring to right. somebody some, some reference report then use the right terminology okay let, let's go to the um uh, some of the assumptions uh, the first thing is that when you are uh, finding your um, transmission for your primary barrier you are neglecting basically the attenuation of the patient which is almost 30 percent up to 30 percent all right, that's the first assumption for the primary barrier. And as you said, the shortest path, which is you have, if you use the right terminology, that is means that the beam is always hitting the, the primary barrier perpendicular to the wall of the beam, which is not the case, right? 
not always the case. But while doing the calculations, there's one of the assumptions, which is not, which is very conservative. Nowadays, we are doing VMAT and whatnot. And the third assumption you can see, um, assume the head leakage is at its maximum. Because as per recommendations, do you know what is the, the leakage for a Linux head is acceptable? If you are installing a new Linux, when you measure what is acceptable limit? 0.1%. 0.1% doses at the level of ISO center. But mostly these are very low. Good. All right, so uh, and the, 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 the fourth one. Uh, when you do your surveys, you always take your measurements at 30 cm away from the barrier. But nobody's all the time sitting at the barrier, right? It's, it's not it's something to leave there. Artists are not going to lean with the wall. That's not possible. So these are some of the conservative assumptions uh, the NCRP is making. All right. So let's go to the next question. Um, this is a very common question that uh, because it's responsible for radiation safety as well in the department, and uh, you have been asked, you have been assigned a task to um, develop uh, a radiation safety or radiation management plan. So can you list some of the elements you would uh, consider while developing a radiation safety plan? Mm -hmm. Roughly any, I mean, you can do, uh, one can say, yeah. Mm -hmm. Radiation Usman, your sound is not clear. Yeah, you're breaking. I don't know who is, is it Usman or? First of all, have you seen your radiation safety plan in your department? Have you read? Yes. Okay, if you haven't read, that's fine. Still, what are the important elements which are coming into your mind that the radiation safety plan should discuss? Reduce the occupational radiation exposure to workers and uh, reduce the radiation exposure to public. That's These are the basic radiation uh, safety purposes. और में अगर ऐड करना चाहें तो रेडिएशन जो इमरजेंसीज होती है जिस तरह इमरजेंसी ग्रिड्स वगैरह इस बैटरी डिस्प्ले या फिजिकल सिक्योरिटी ऑफ रेडिएटिव सोर्स देट में भी कोबाल्ड और देट में भी अबेटी थेरेपी सोर्स लाइक इरिडियम और फॉर टेली थेरेपी ओके आई आई नॉट फोर्सिंग यू गाइस टू स्पीक इन इंग Maybe if you can try uh, to speak in English, that it will be, if you guys are for ready for part three, I'm, I'm not forcing you. Those who guys are ready for part three, try to speak in English so that you may convey your message to the examiner. Um, this is just one of my suggestions. Hamid, do you want to air something on relation safety? Management plan, what? I think, uh, first of all, uh, the uh, uh, we know the uh, environment or facility that uh, we have a sealed source or unsealed source. And then based on these uh, sources type, uh, we will uh, decide that uh, the occupational expo exposure and um, uh, the uh, public exposure to keep as minimum. And we have to design like uh, such kind of, uh, we can say such, such, सच हम कह सकते हैं कि ये बेसिकली पर्पस है कि हम सराउंडिंग को और अपने जो डेली रूटीन में जो समझे अटेंडेंट आ रहे हैं और जो पेशेंट हैं उसको किस तरह का ना मिनिमम रख सकते हैं तो बेसिकली इफ यू आर यूजिंग रेडियोएक्टिव सोर्सेस फॉर योर ब्रेकी थेरेपी देन हाउ यू आर गोइंग टू इनकॉर्पोरेट दैट काइंड ऑफ स्टफ इन योर रेडिएशन सेफ्टी प्लान अम जनाबिंग and then the, for the as you mentioned that uh, if there is a breaky source then of course we have to uh, arrange the surveillance camera 
uh, record and uh, uh, audio visual system should be there and uh, a lock and key system should be placed so that door can be uh, unlocked by the uh, authority person uh, authorized person of course and uh, other than that is uh, yeah for the uh, sources that's is uh, kind of safety should be placed other than that the main management plan jo uh, hai wo should cover all the aspects of the entrance exit safety uh, exits and uh, in terms of emergency uh, the reinforcement should be placed the security staff should be placed for that right um here you go uh, some of the points uh, you guys have discussed and some i have added uh, what should i say i think you guys also need to look at your reports i'm sure in your department there must be a radiation safety plan and yes. if not you can go to even the pnra website as well i'm i'm hoping they must have some um, they used to call it i don't remember they used to call a different word for that so but these are the some of the important points um, uh definitely legislation right regulatory requirements to operate any radiation generating equipment you need a license either is it uh, you can say either if you are referring you can say pnra similarly i was discussing radioactive sources if you want to import radioactive source from somewhere else you need the license to do that if you are sending back some source you need the export license so you need to discuss that and um, uh, yeah this is what i said in case of an emergency what's your policy and the procedure in your department it should be written just like in a brecky if something is happening who is responsible for what what's the procedure what's the first step someone needs to take it should be written and then those near misses how you are reporting and the incident report and root cause analysis how you are doing that and one of the current practice which tg handed is discussing is doing the qualitative base instead of uh, so equipment improvement staff monitoring how you are managing your uh, doses security of sources you discuss signages licensing in our country really we don't we don't need license to operate mm -hmm. radiation equipment i guess but in some countries like here you need a license to operate radiation safety um, uh, any radiation radiation equipment and the training records if someone is doing an audit and how you can make sure that we are doing refresher training and the whatever so so these are some of the points the radiation safety plan should discuss mm -hmm. all right so this is a this is a kind of exam question plus <laughs> this is one of the most favorite question of uh, uh, some recruiters if you are getting recruited somewhere in mostly in australia they used to ask you this question that your rt is left in the linac bunker and the beam was energized means beam was on outline the steps you and uh, you have to take to manage this incident you as, as an expert in the department definitely the first line of report will be you you will say that sir this is has happened so how we are going to manage this <clears throat> Uh, first of all, uh, we will uh, report this uh, incident to radiation uh, um, protection officer, and uh, uh, if he is still there, if the person is still inside the bunker and the beam is on, the first uh, step should be uh, to um, uh, turn on the emergency button and turn off the the beam, and then. Uh, Uh, report the radiation protection officer, and uh, he will definitely take his uh, radiation dose measurement equipment that whatever he is wearing, and uh, he will uh, uh, enlist the uh, the radiation dose that he has received during that time, and uh, it will be of course uh, reported in his uh, or. incidents uh, blog that uh, we have been creating and uh, uh, it sh uh, shall be if the he has received higher dose it shall be uh, uh, reported to authorities or else it will what, what's the higher dose for you uh, usually uh, higher dose uh, if 
if he has received uh, more than 10 milliseconds in that time, whole body dose. So mm, these are the steps that usually uh, a radiation emergency uh, should be taken. And it, uh, All right, you, have, you have answered to some extent, but it the formatting needs to be. Uh, but before anyone other attempts, I, uh, let me give you an idea that you need to discuss this in uh, immediate, immediately what you're going to do. And, uh, short term, immediately and long term, how, how you are going to do that, right? So you have to categorize this into three parts. This incident has happened immediately what you are going to do. And then after a while, what you are going to do. And the post incident at the end on, for the long term, what you are going to do. So can you summon an attempt? Usman, you have attempted very well, uh, but I'm not happy with what you said about 10 millisievert. I need the, the 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 resource or the reference for that. But anyone uh, attend, wants to attempt this question? This is very important. Okay, uh, first of all, uh, if uh, that incident was happening at that moment, then of course the emergency procedure should be followed uh, to terminate the beam. Uh, the second step would be that uh, to do the RCA, uh, report the uh, radiation protection officer and uh, set the RCA root cause analysis for the incident that has that has happened. And uh, also verified that uh, that RT is wearing the monitoring device and uh, that monitoring device should be read uh, to get what, uh, how much dose he's got. Um, also in, uh, should include the investigation, whether he is in the primary beam or the scatter beam, and what's the location of that uh, person in that room. And uh, we can do the in vivo dosimetry for that as well. Uh, not in vivo dosimetry, a dosimetry, uh, by placing a, any you other, simulate, yeah, simulate uh, that incident that placing any OSL or a TLD at that position or a chamber, calculate how much dose that uh, person could get in the, and also um, should monitor the time, how much time uh, he spent on the bunker. You will check uh, your backup counter. Yeah, backup counter, should... yes, yeah. of course. All right, and... yeah, it's a good, yeah, good, good one. Um, just one more thing, uh, Usman. Uh, whenever you say for the examiner a uh, 10 millisievert, he might ask you from where you are getting this number, right? Um, so in for from examination point of view, don't give any figure if you don't have any references. Like for 10 millisievert, do you have any reference? <clears throat> Uh, 10 millisievert is the average uh, annual dose of uh, occupational radiation uh, exposure. Okay. All right. Usually, the rule of thumb is uh, for as per the IAEA guideline, um, any incident is reportable if you are delivering, you know, 10 percent of the maximum permissible dose limits. All right. Maybe you are confusing with the 10. So it's just it's their thing, all right. Okay, can uh, we, uh, if, uh, sorry, Rangor, I would just want to know that if the examiner asks that uh, at what level uh, you should uh, like report the incident. So can we say that the action level set by our organization? You can, step-wise, that's true, yeah. If you are following the IAA guidelines, you can just refer to that. If you okay. say, I will follow the local regulations, they're not going to stop you okay. because you, you have your own regulations. Nobody's going to stop you. But generally, you know, most of the things are going towards the IAEA, right? Right. For our countries, at least on their side, it's the IAEA. But if you're going to the US and Canada, they have their own. But uh, okay. yeah. Anyway, so uh, my, my uh, when you answer this, uh, think in a broader spectrum that immediately what you are going to do, you guys, in your answer, you neglect the RT at all. The RT has been given a radiation, right? You, you are not talking about him. He's in, he's in a stress. You need to give him some comfort zone that this is, has happened. We are going to do this investigation. We will simulate the situation. We will immediately send you a TLD and we will find out. And if uh, he's really getting something higher, then you will reassign his duties somewhere else. And of course, the patient is sitting on the couch as well. 
what you are going to do with the patient. You will talk to the rest of the artists so that they can continue. That's, that's the approach. So you can see, uh, definitely you have to take off him from the work. You will note down your meals from your backup counter and you mentioned very good. Immediately you will uh, report this to your RSO. You will lodge an incident. You have, you have incident reporting mechanism in your department. And then you will send the bay. And uh, you will do some simulated work by using uh, your even ionization based chamber survey meters by putting them in integrated mode. And then um, you will make a report uh, for regulator, as I said, if it is above the limit. Otherwise, you don't need to. Uh, and for the later, why this has happened, right? So they, they want you to listen that what are you going to do to prevent this? So you will manage, you will arrange a trip. You will check whether the last person out was working or not. If not, then you will talk to the engineer. What about the uh, audio visual system? Why it was not working? Why the guy couldn't manage to see that uh, the RT was inside? All right. So this is a, a case that you are doing, um, you are taking some measurements on your water phantom and um, during the water tank measurements, uh, the reference channel is showing near zero while your field chamber is behaving as expected. So what are the four things that you are, you are getting zero readings from your reference? Maybe he's out of the field? Maybe. That's one. Maybe. That's one reason. Yeah. Or uh, the field is uh, quite small the uh, with respect to chamber size. Yeah, that's out or of volume, field. Chamber volume. Yeah, that's out of field, right? That's one of your points. That's out okay. of field, so okay. it's getting zero. Okay. What could be the other reasons? Maybe uh, the reference chamber is not a device. Maybe. Connected to, yeah, we are not applying any voltage, right? Yeah, maybe voltage. Yeah, that's fine. Maybe it's malfunctioning. That's true as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, good. So you guys said it's not connected, right? It's not connected, it's not getting voltage. So if you are not put, applying any potential, it's not going to give you anything. So maybe the chamber is faulty. That's fine. You said not in the field. Your electrometer is broken. Maybe the, there is a damage in the cable, wrong voltage. All right, so very, very common question. Um, uh, that I don't know from experience when I was back in Pakistan, when we were getting our training, uh, I don't know why we missed this part, those four perturbation factors, we were not taught Anyway, we have been trained under the very good physicists, but when I came here in the price, when I read these four points, so what are the four perturbation correction factors, which is included if I if I make your life easy in KQ factor? I've not gone through this. I can just show you the answer. No worries. Gradient, gradient factor and fluence factor. Right Fluence factor, fluence, fluence factor, fluence, fluence and gradient. Uh, for electron, it is usually the, uh, used in. These are the two that are. You are right about gradient, uh, but what do you mean by fluence? fluence? Everything is because of the the fluence, the change in the fluence. I think uh, um, temperature, pressure, these are. Uh, in fact, these all are perturbation like KQ uh, factor. This uh, okay. KQ call, is... it, call it quality. Okay. Yeah, within the KQ, how, there are four factors. You need to mention them and the reason. Okay. Basically, we are getting the protocol based on your TPR twenty ten or PDD ten, right? We are not thinking of what the hell that KQ is. Actually, actually, KQ factor. Uh, is for in scatter fraction, uh, factor and obliquity uh, factor, some like these. 
these the, these corrections are made uh, in this what uh, sector li li you are increasing you are enhancing my knowledge what liquidity a liquidity factor correction factor and in scatter correction factor and uh, these are the correction factors that uh, have been used in this and uh, there are so, other uh, that uh, your your former especially this is applicable to the former chambers your former chambers are directionally independent right why you are talking about obligatory? Uh, I, I, I read it somewhere, so that's why I'm. It is in the uh, effective point of measurement. P yeah. displacement is the same thing, okay? Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, but the good reference is if you guys are following TRS 398, go to TRS 398, you will find out. If you guys are following TG51, you will find out that as well. So, but these are some of the factors the speed displacement, all right, which is good. Okay. Um, basically, what's the idea of KQ is that when you put your chamber in a water phantom or in a solid phantom, the idea behind um, is that the chamber is giving you a dose at a certain point in the absence of the chamber, right? But the problem is that to measure a charge, you have to put a chamber and it has its own cavity. It has its central lector, it has its wall. The fluence will be different, which you were discussing. The electron fluence in the chamber will be different in the air cavity as compared to the phantom. So how you are going to incorporate that? So th that uh, dirty work has been done by your protocol in the background. So we are just picking the KQ factor. So this is the K cavity. So definitely uh, is, the, uh, is the correction factor of the displacement of the electron influence caused by the air cavity, because that's not a phantom, that's not the medium. Medium means there's a medium, but not, not the water medium. So P displacement you were discussing, right? That the effective point of measurement is not at the geometrical center of your chamber. And this is one of the reason which I think we have discussed this in group multiple times that why we are not applying the effective point of measurement while doing the reference dosimetry. This is one of the reason because it has been already taken in KQ factor. It has been answered many times if you listen, if you are following the chat. And then the P wall. P wall is not the, the, the water equivalent. Although they are trying to make it as water equivalent, but still is going to disturb the fluence of the electron. So you need to incorporate that. Similarly, the P cell, which is most of the time is made up of aluminum. So it's not it's not the water. Again, there is a there is a there is a scatter electrons creating and all the stuff. So these are the four factors we are commonly asking you. These are called we used to say perturbation factors, but what are the perturbation factors? These four of them. TRS398 is discussing all of them very clearly. All right. Uh, you, you, you are undertaking annual QA of your dual energy LINAC and you find TPR 2010 is out of tolerance, right? What steps are you going to take? Either consider it TG, I mean, PDD 10, who, those who are following TG 51, but those who are following the RST 98, it's the TPR 20 is out of tolerance. What you're going to do there? Come on, Hamid. Yes. First, of, first of all, um, we will uh, reinsure the setup that uh, uh, the correct setup, or if uh, in terms of uh, TG51 and uh, the chamber placement at D10, and uh, I think these are some uh, some two three factors that uh, we will yeah. Asad, you want to add something? After doing that, uh, which Hamid has said, uh, can try another chamber as well. Uh, if it's failed, then of course, we will incorporate the biomedical engineers to adjust that uh, By the way, quality. Follow -up question. What's the importance of yeah, this TPR 2010? It's verifying the beam quality. Yeah. 
so beam quality is giving you what? Basically, it, it gives us what? It's basically, uh, the penetration power. The characterization of the energy, of, of course. Yeah, yeah. So, as Hamid said, uh, uh, basically, you need to eliminate your setup error, first of all, right? Because if it's a setup error, that's a different thing. If it's a machine specific, then as you said, you, you will follow the engineer or whatever needs to be changed. So maybe, uh, uh, because you will see TRS-398, they are not really measuring uh, TPR-2010, rather they are taking using the formalism given in TRS-398 just from the PDD. Just put the values and you can straight away get the TPR-T20. So if there is, they have not taken care of effective point of measurement, then definitely there will be an issue that maybe your jaws, polymeters are not zero, jaw settings were not right, right detector, as you mentioned, the, the number of mu reference data. Maybe you are comparing with your wrong reference data. Maybe you are getting the right thing, right? You need to check because always there is a baseline from the commissioning. And then the phantom, the, the software, Maybe if the software is directly giving you the TPR20 from your PDD, maybe it's using the wrong protocol because you have IAA protocol, TG51 protocol, IEC protocol, there are so many. Maybe that's the wrong. Um, then this is what they want to listen as well. If you're doing an annual QA and you have not done your QA for a long time, you will see the trend. If there is a trend in the beam quality, and if you can get it from your daily QA or your weekly QA, if there is a trend, maybe there's reflecting there. And you will find out if there is engineering work has been done in your absence. No, I mean, somebody has done something. You will ask, you will ask for the work order. You will talk to engineer, have you done anything? And uh, if you are get stuck, here they ask, they want to see you, are you working as a team? You will ask your, your colleague, get his opinion. with the measurement as well. And, uh, uh, rarely, the beam energy changes, very rarely. But if it is, after finding everything, then you can talk to engineer and then you can adjust. So here is your uh, simple question. Anyone can jump in. I mean, if you have seen some of the artifacts, can you mention some of them? In the artifacts, uh, metal artifacts. Yeah. Streak artifacts. Streak artifacts. Yeah. Yeah, good. What is streak artifact anyways? It may be because of uh, uh, the reading detector that may be fault, faulty. Jo detector laga hua the city mein. Yeah, that's true. Detectors, okay, may function. All right, here you go. You have some of uh, the artifacts. Um, the volume averaging, so the beam hardening as well. Uh, um, then, as you said, ring artifacts. If there is a problem with your one of your misalignment of your detectors, sticking artifacts, photon saturation, and the motion, you yeah, motion artifact. So this is your, you can see your ring artifact, and this is your so beam hardening. You will see you are. This is your soft tissue, and this is your bony 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 anatomy. So because of the attenuation of uh, if you are dialing a KVP, which is not to penetrate, then definitely it's not, because this is a transmission-based imaging, you will not get enough signal. So therefore, you are hardly differentiating what's happening here. So therefore, you have to increase your KVPs in this case. In this case you need to, uh, do your calibration of your detectors. For motion artifacts, Pretty much, uh, if you have any 4D imaging system, you can do that. Otherwise, you can't. But you can see this is metal artifacts. If there is an uh, implant. All right. So the engineer has come to you and notified that the ionization chamber has been replaced. What steps do you take? I hope some of you guys have done this job. Uh, 
I'm sure. I know Asad has done maybe. No, I haven't done. <laughs> well, oh, uh, in oh, Linux, no, uh, has in, not changed on the Linux. In Linux one, it's uh, I think the whole tube was changed along with the chamber, I believe. Okay. Uh -huh, so, Asad, uh, so, so so variant machines are so good, you mean? Okay. <laughs> Okay, so beam output should be verified, beam profile, uh, flatness symmetry, and uh, beam quality, of course. And also the safety uh, feature should be checked, whether mu1 and mu2 are working properly. And uh, other uh, recommendations from the engineers, uh, vendors, because they provide before, the booklet. Before starting, before starting all those tests, would you, would you, would you ask something else? Would you look, you want to some more something? I mean, before taking all those steps you mentioned, we'll check that beam uh, is operating or not. Uh -huh. It's functional, of course, and. Uh, Else. Yeah, the only thing is that which is not really not really mentioned in this answer is that uh, whenever your engineer is touching your head of the Linux, you have to do some uh, safety test of your Linux as well. Uh, in terms of the leakage, you need to ask the engineer what has he changed in the Linux so that you can think of the mechanical part as well. But if he has stayed away and just changed the ionization chambers, then your answer is, is fine. Otherwise, you can see you need to consider the safety where you need to find out even the leakage as well, if he has touched anything. Therefore, communication with engineer is crucial that what he has done basically. Maybe he has you know, changed something on the jaws as well and the jaw calibration is out. Maybe the MLC calibration needs, they needs a recalibration. So therefore, uh, as you said, definitely you have to discuss. Right. And uh, the timelines as well, that if this is uh, the running machine, then you will notify the, the administration that this is going to happen and it will take this much of time to make it clinical. Communication, make safety. Before taking any measurement, safety is the first. You have to make sure that leakage is within the limit. And then, as you mentioned, interlocks. You cannot, uh, because you are going to a break, you know the interlocks are not working, you are working carefully, but one of your colleague is not there. He don't know what's happening. So uh, if the interlocks are not good, then you are in trouble. And then rest, which is very, very common one. And this is what we are missing. The examiners wants to mention that you are doing some kind of documentation as well, that you have done this and the review, documentation and the review by one of your colleague or your senior, that he needs to review the results. And this is also important. Uh, they want to listen from you. New ionization chambers, they are getting, uh, you know, they're changing their behavior over the time if they are new. So the output needs to be adjusted on weekly basis, especially for the, the new ones. And you have to monitor them or period of month. And then once you get the stable reading, then you are good to go. All right. Um, uh, so uh, I don't know, at, at, at AKU, when I was there, we were using um, uh, handmade new calc for verification of our TPS doses. Uh, but I do, I'm not sure about the rest of the centers. Uh, usually here is the to verify your uh, plan uh, by sending that plan to the independent source. We, we have we call the red cow. And uh, there is a discrepancy between your TPS and your independent electron mu calc. You've been asked to investigate this issue. How you are going to investigate that? How many of you are using a Scandi uh, calculation 
software to verify your DPS doses in your department? Any of you, are you doing that? Do you have any third party software? Well, we don't have uh, that software. Um, in, uh, in my previous center, we used to have a uh, mucal sheet only. We are not using a TPS. Um, yes, uh, we verified the data of the TPS before using the manual mucalc. Um, for this question, the answer would be that uh, if there is a discrepancy, then of course we can uh, check on the machine uh, with placement of the chamber and the cutout, specific cutout, and we can verify the dose. Or we can do the film dosimetry as well. Um, yeah, okay, let's go to the answer. Uh, because definitely you are sending your information from your TPS to their software. So the first thing you need to verify is that the right information has been transferred. That's, that's important because if the right information has been not transferred, then um, definitely you are going to. So this includes your definitely number of news are right, your precise and everything has been transferred in a, in a right manner. And uh, these secondary software checks are very limited. Just like Asad, you remember, the was nothing just an empirical formalism right so we were getting a normalization point from tps and we were putting there because it's not taking care of any kind of uh, inhomogeneity so that's one of the limitation as well you can conclude um one thing is that uh, water equivalent because for electrons if there is an air if there is a bone this, these scanty mu calcs are not capable of really giving the water equivalent doses Depth. So therefore, you can give your water equivalent depth there. Um, so this is the the tolerance is given in uh, ICRU, and uh, and for photons, this is uh, uh, the TG one two eight, which, which discusses the discrepancies. Even for the IMRT, uh, for the latest. If you we have the uh, you have the new scan D software checks for IMRT even previously it was only for the 3D CRT. All right, uh, now it's a, a fundamental question that uh, you have a phantom and you can see uh, in between there is a there is a material whose density is less than the density and. Um, there are various points A, B, C, D, and uh, can you discuss the influences of the tissue inhomogeneity, which is sitting in the middle, sitting in the middle uh, at the points? Because of this inhomogeneity, what are the influences on the point A, B, and the C as compared to the doses at the same point in homogeneous medium? If it was a homogeneous me medium, and because you have introduced inhomogeneous, what will be the influence on the doses on A, B, C, D because of this inhomogeneity with respect to in the absence of inhomogeneity? And it may be the reason as well that that might be a follow up. So just to make it clarify, what will be the effect on the point A because of this inhomogeneity? If it is was not there, what? currently what you are thinking, what is going to affect the point dose A, A because of the, the inhomogeneity of this inhomogeneity? Think in terms of the interaction what, and what's the effect of the density when the photon interacts with this material. And the contribution of the dose is coming from where to the point A. Think about that. The examiner is not going to make your life easy the way I'm doing. All right. <laughs> yeah, uh, we have to answer uh, in uh, 
absence of inhomogeneity means um, effect of this inhomogeneous material on the point doses, which is point A in this case, if this if this material was not there, I mean, you have to compare, right? Okay, I, I don't know. I I'm think, not, I'm not... I think uh, the A point dose uh, will not be affected as much. Uh, the, uh, the D dose, of course, it will affect. It will uh, be higher or lower, I think. Um, you have to stick with one. Will it be okay, higher okay. or lower? Okay, lower. You are right direction. You are in the right direction. Will it be higher or lower? Let's make it that day. And yeah. why? Lower, because uh, uh, when the homogeneous material come in place, then the attenuation will be higher. Then D dose will be lower. Uh, whereas A point will remain same. It's not a uh, negligible change. It will be. Uh, the B point, of course, it will be uh, higher because uh, previously it, uh, like if they are giving 100%, then in the absence of homogeneous, it will be getting higher. And the C point will get the scattered dose in the presence or in the absence of homogeneous material. So it will be, um, I think, um it will be higher again i think because more scatter will come from the this point do you think the the lower density will give more scatter to the sea okay again the question is uh, like uh, this is a denser material or lower material <laughs> so lower material the row is lower less material. than one okay so the homogeneous material of course it will give the higher dose So what are here? Look at the point first A. Okay, now Hamid is giving the answer. Uh, uh, the A point uh, will get uh, less spec scatter from this uh, low density medium. Uh, the minimal uh, dose difference. The D dose uh, will become higher uh, because of uh, uh, less attenuation in lower denser medium. And T point will remain somehow similar to the, um, in the case uh, with or without, without, no difference in C. The A will higher, uh, will lower, D will higher, I think. Look, uh, when you say point A, I was trying to look for the word, right? So the A is getting less back scattered because of the lesser dense. So definitely, if there is a less back scatter, the there would be a low dose. And the B, there is a uh, the dose deposit material are higher than if the inhomogeneous water phantom due to the difference in the mass energy absorption ratio. Since the cavity is large, the the latter scatter uh, will be achieved. The C, C, you are getting less less uh, latter scatter. So lack of side of the field and from the low dense material will be reduced the dose because you are towards the periphery of your field less from the lateral plus less scatter from the less dense material so they will be low so about the d the dose will appear as if they will share in homogeneous to depth is shorter than the, the, the d i'm not really i'm a bit confused about the d answer frankly speaking but the rest you need to think of in terms of the back scatter and the letter scatter. They are, they want to check you. You can see the effect of the field size on those point doses, plus the presence of less dense materials in the medium. That's what they want to see. That what's your concept? That how those uh, treatment planning algorithms are sometimes unable to manage um, the doses in the inhomogeneous medium because they are not really good at doing this except those monte carlo the monaco is the right uh, algorithm uh, the treatment planning system which really takes care otherwise initially when we started the pvc it was doing nothing when you when you draw a, a profile across in inhomo inhomogeneous material it was giving you a straight line it was doing nothing
All right, here is a task for you guys that you have been given a task to upgrade your TPS to a new dose calculation algorithm for photons. And you have to take fewer steps. You are the in charge to upgrade your TPS to a new treatment planning algorithm, calculation algorithm. How you will approach Uh, first of all, we, we should know that the requirement of uh, this algorithm, uh, the data type that required for, for the TPS of that specific algorithm, like uh, a specific to PTD or output factor, some field related data. I think uh, these are uh, some consideration. Okay. All right, before giving you the feedback, and anyone else want to jump in? Your, your, your answer is typically just the requirement of the TPS, right? Uh, you need to think in a wider spectrum. It's a, it's, a, it's a whole change of the treatment planning algorithm in your department, and you are in charge of doing that. Are you just look and see that what's the requirement? Additional, additional to these uh, steps, uh, uh, one has to understand uh, how to plug in all the data into the, uh, that TPS. Then uh, we have to check the system, like uh, making a phantom and calculating the dose, and then uh, do the QA checks on the machine. Uh, I don't, uh, I couldn't come to the terminology that you used to use on that. So, yeah. Can you remember 2012? Uh, when we were shipping end to end testing. Yeah. End to end testing. Yeah. All right. But look, you, you, the department is, is a running department, right? It's an upgrade. The patients which are already on treatment, you are going to treat, it's a running department, right? So how, how you are going to manage that? I, can you stop saying that uh, the, the RO, they don't um, consult the patients, we are doing upgrade, we can't plan or what? Think of a broader, broader spectrum. Well, uh, I don't think that uh, there will be a problem of ongoing patients. Yes, we can have to stop new patients for a while. Um, if uh, we already uh, got the data with us, and uh, so it will take not more than two days to do that on the weekend, do that on the weekends. So that can be covered up. Yeah. All right, so um, basically uh, upgrade of a treatment planning system, especially the, uh, the algorithm is considered to be a huge job uh, and where you need a multidisciplinary team uh, because this is going to pretty much everyone, uh, not only the planners, rather your RTs, physicists, and your radiation oncologist. And uh, uh, Hamid covered part of the upgrade that he is going to look at the requirements of the new treatment planning system, that, that new algorithm, so he can capture the new data, right? So that's one aspect. So for that, he, he, he rightly mentioned that he will read the vendor, um, uh, the manuals and the, the notes, release notes, and he will do some literature review on that new, uh, uh, new algorithm. And uh, if there is a requirement of any PDD, extra PDD or uh, output factors, whatever. And then, as you mentioned, you will put into a TPS and you will model that and you will uh, check by uh, doing some calculations on your some of your old plans and see what kind of difference are you getting. And uh, some, as I said, you have to, this is very important, that you have to do QA for some of your old, very different, which is not making sense for you. And then you said you can do some uh, phantom measurements by simply creating a water phantom and see it is 
pick in the right doses, and then you can introduce your uh, inhomogeneity. And Asad said, this is very crucial. You have to do end to end. Before handing over to the, before clinically implementing, starting from your CT simulation, if they ask you, what, does it, what do you mean by hand, uh, end to end? Then you will say, I will scan a phantom. I will send it to the treatment planning system. I will contour, I will make a plan, I will do QA, and I will send it to the record and verify, and I will deliver, and I will say that is archiving the data back to the server, all the stuff. And if there is a, a something new, you can inform the RTs and the ROs, radiation oncologist, and then uh, this should be done on, a, and then you can implement after running. Right. So it's up to you guys. If you want us to continue, we can continue. The questions are so many. Uh, if I mean, if you have a stem now, you can continue. Otherwise, you can see the questions are still so many. I mean, we cannot finish. Or we can discuss this last one and we can we can stop because I know you guys are working there as well. I'm I'm at home, so I have no issue. How many of you? I am. I'm sure you guys are doing HDR, and uh, I I remember at AKU we used to verify uh, definitely the air karma stamp. And the question is that the difference between your certificate and the, your measured one is seven percent. What you are going to do? Well, fortunately or unfortunately, we didn't find this kind of discrepancy yet. <laughs> Unfortunately, we, uh, we haven't found that thing, so we may have experience if uh, we got this kind of error. No, no, don't, okay. don't, never, ever. I'm a bit. This, okay. This has happened. You, you, it's, it's a clean, it's a scenario. Don't, don't say that. You don't say that. It means you don't know if this has happened. Okay. What you will do? I mean, you don't know that how to handle this. Uh, first of all, we will check our uh, the system, our own system, the ion uh, the well chamber, whether it is uh, out of calibration or not. Uh, we will check that, and we will repeat uh, the measurements, and uh, if possible, we could do the uh, farmer chamber measurements. If we do have a setup to verify whether uh, there is a problem in our uh, the previous setup that can be done and uh, if the problem persists then of course we should report and document that thing and uh, you know, ask vendor to set the things so you mentioned uh, using the the former chamber which is called in air measurements yes how how you can do the in air measurements well, we have to uh, have a setup for that as well. Uh, like we can do the water phantom, empty water phantom, and uh, we can place uh, in a such a way that the source will come at one meter away from the farmer chamber. Uh, these kind of conditions that could be done. Uh, other than that, uh, we can also use the solid water phantom as well. Setup. So there are. Can you do it? Can you do at one meter distance? Yes, that's the I think recommendation. No, no, don't don't say that. Okay, you 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 will reference there. Uh, both both methods are mentioned in uh, TikTok one two seven four. Either you have to do in a well chamber or in air method. You said, not don't say well chamber. I mean you can do in air measurements using a well chamber, but their recommendation is to do at sixteen cm and. Uh, if you if you start saying in air measurements, the topic is totally different, and then they will ask you that why we are not preferring to use in air measurements. There's, there are four uncertainties, and why not at one meter? Why at sixteen cm? That's different debate. So don't uh, uh, just you know, not to bring anything if you really don't know, because uh, what we found uh, is that. If they find if they find there is a lacking of knowledge in between somewhere, then they will ask you cross questions. Then they will drag you there because if you mention I will do in air, then definitely they want to know how you are going to do that. Now you say one meter, then they're wrong. So not try to give them any chance that they they, they catch you. All right. So this is what you said. Um, 
definitely you will check first of all you right that uh, the excel sheet if you are using a spreadsheet maybe someone has done a deletion or whatever any factor check your calculations if you can do even manually if you know the formalism right and then maybe there's a time in there and then for well chamber the first thing is to find the sweet spot right so you will find out the sweet spot again see the voltage is temperature correction factors are applied all you have mentioned and then is very important this shows that you are working in a team you are not uh, my knowledge you, you are and you will also you can check that uh, some uh, if we are doing a strong source consistency checks you can check that as well and uh, yeah the rest you can see um so but anyways if um, which value are you putting in your TPS? Are you using the one you call, you are measuring or the one which is given in the, given by your measure, measured through your T, uh, certificate using the decay chart? Which one you are using? Which one you are putting and why? Which one you? Well, uh, we, uh, for the new system, uh, uh, AKUH, it's uh, there is uh, there are two places we have to place that value. The first one on the gamma med system the console, and uh, the other one is on the uh, Brachyvision uh, planning system. So in the planning system, we only write the source number and uh, serial number, right? Yeah, serial but number in, yes. on the console. On the console, which value you are going to put? The one measured or one which you are given by the certificate? Well, we can put any any value. It's uh, open. No, we will put the uh, measured value because when we calculate and the devil time uh, it generate, it gives the time according to the source activity, not the cert, uh, certificate activity, I guess. But now you are taking care of it, right? Through the time zone difference. That's fine. The time, the, the decay in the activity is taken care of that's fine so you know there's this is a, a debatable thing um if your deviation is within the tolerance it's recommended to use the vendors one and the reason is that you have a lot of uncertainties and that they have a robust mechanism to measure it in their uh, system uh, so in your clinic the uncertainties are higher than theirs. Therefore, mostly people put theirs, not, not the measured one. But as you said, again, you can put it as institutional policy, but uh, TikTok 1274 says that um, if it is within the tolerance, just put the one uh, through the, the certificate. Of course, by in incorporating the, the decay, right? All right, so Asad, what do you think? Should we stop at here or? If you have any questions, if you want to uh, do it differently or any any feedback, it's up to you. Uh, otherwise, we can stop. Okay. Um, if you like, we can extend uh, for 30 or more minutes if you do have uh, more right. questions. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, no worries. Can do that. I think this is we can skip this question. Um, it's a pretty much those who are doing HDR brachytherapy, brachyvision, there are various ways to optimize your plans. And I hope those who are doing, they should know. Uh, those who don't, it's just either you can do volumetric optimization or you can manually change the dual positions and you can use the graphical methods and the, the model systems that can even do the inverse plane. When we started our training, there was point doses, as other members that AP and the lateral and the point A, point B. We are old school, but now you guys are doing inverse plan, so which is good. I don't want to go into details. All right, so um, so your center is changing from 2D to 3D planning for intrauterine HDR. So first of all, what's the rationale behind doing this? And uh, 
what is the recommended imaging you are going to recommend to your department and what slice thickness would you prefer and uh, what are the target volumes and uh, what's the doors reporting mechanism and uh, any references and uh, if it's a new requirement of applicators what kind of applicators you prefer you have to discuss all these steps while shifting from 2D to 3D planning. We can start from rationale. Anyone who is doing brekkie, I know Asad and uh, Hamid, they, they, they have done this. Anyone else want to jump in? Otherwise, Hamid and Asad, you guys can. First question is that uh, uh, in 2D, we just use the Manchester system, the point dose measurement, uh, point A, point A uh, optimization. And 3D, we uh, do the volumetric uh, adjustment to the high risk volume, the concept of high risk volume. Rather, the CTV, they mark high risk volume. And uh, the recommended imaging is the MRI for the 3D case. But still, uh, people are using CT and fuse the MRI to for volume delineation. The recommended, uh, but the recommendation is the MRI. And slice slice thickness, I think uh, we we go with the two three mm uh, slice thickness and uh, target volumes. I already turned high risk volume and dose reporting. Uh, D ninety is the coverage. Uh, we mostly use and uh, for the OERs, uh, two, two cc volume of the bladder and rectum, these are the evaluation tools. And new requirements of applicator, which data set. Uh, applicator. Uh, I think. Can you? Yeah, you, you pick up everything is fine. Um, only the, the literature, can you? Do you have any one to citation or something, any report name which you are going to follow in terms of those reporting or something? For the 3D? Thank you for sharing. You mentioned very correctly, I mean, 2CC, 0.0, 2CC. 86. 80. ICRU 86, I think. Oh. ICRU plus, yeah, get ISTRO guidelines. ISTRO uh, guidelines. Yeah. All right. So, the uh, yeah. All right. Yeah, it's good. Um, so as you mentioned, uh, point doses is, is not the right way to do it uh, based on the films. So rather you need something in 3D, which is good. MRI is the recommended. And uh, part of the reason uh, is that uh, because of the good soft tissue resolution, currently you can see they are uh, doing a kind of fusion with the interstitial and the intercavitary. And with new new applicators, you have seen those tandem and ovars. They are coming with some uh, needle insertion options on the side, because uh, for intercavitary, uh, you are limited with the size of your PTV. If the patients are not getting a good response from the, and um, we are forced to do the uh, IMRT, but the with the, for the boost. But if you have those kind of applicators. Then you can do the interstitial and MRI is the right uh, right imaging modality to tell you the response. Slice thickness, as you mentioned, and the uh, Gecky Stro guidelines and um, and high volume, which is good. Good, Hamid. Well done. And uh, those reporting you mentioned, uh, D10, D90, OR, 1CC, all the stuff is mentioned there. And uh, okay. From MRI, of course, MRI safety is important if you are doing MRI and the CT together. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Um, one of the important documents of ICRP 103, very common question. Um, uh, you need to explain those three fundamental principles which are given in the, the radiological protection as, uh, as given in the International Commission on Radiological Protection. What are those three fundamentals which are mentioned? Usman and Arshad, you guys are now. 
I don't know where you guys are moving. You want to jump into this question? I think uh, the radiobiological protection, uh, the point of view should be TDS, time, distance, and shielding. The fundamental principle of the radiobiological radiological protection. Time, distance, and shielding, TDS. Mm, okay. Yeah, that's the kind of Lara principle. Um, all right. All right, that's one of the aspects, but uh, I'm looking for something. Okay. Uh, um, it's awareness, justification, and optimization. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's what that's what is categorically mentioned in there in ICID one or three. Uh, that you need to justify first of all any any radiation you are giving any decision radiation exposure you need to justify. That's what they are discussing, and optimization of course uh, you need to optimize not to uh, give access to us unnecessarily, right? And then the, the, the application of those limits. We know every organ tolerances and uh, you have to limit the dose and to keep it uh, minimum. And uh, the way you said, Usman, it is, is applicable here. The Alara principle uh, is applicable here that how you are optimizing, uh, right? So it's a kind of sub but in general, these are the three things they have mentioned there. All right. So those who are using the MLC, um, there are definitely three uh, sources of leakage. So can you name three of them? Not make any eye contact with anyone because cameras are off. Uh, Shaziev has said that intra leaf in chat box he is saying, giving the answer intra, intra leaf and transmission. That's, that's good. All right, yeah, intra, intra leaf and uh, it's approximately contributing to the 2% uh, transmission through full leaf thickness itself and, uh, and it's, it's, it's more than that and definitely because of the two junctions of the leaf and uh, this has been controlled by using the tongue and glue you know that and the abutting fields um, because those rounded leaves are not exactly touching each other uh, right they are rounded the transmission between the two abutting leaves as well Right. Why, anyway, this is a kind of follow-up question, maybe. Um, why the we're both wearing an electra, they are using the rounded leaves? What's the rationale behind it? Why they are not making them straight at the junction point, rather than to, they're making To reduce them. the geometric number. Geometric or transmission? To reduce the penumbra. Yeah. Transmission number. Uh, to rather that is yeah. Uh, you have to uh, keep constant the penumbra across uh, when you move the MLCs to pretty much keep it constant. If you don't do that, then you have to uh, uh, the way Siemens does. They have designed their MLCs in a such a way that it follows the uh, uh, divergence of the beam, right? So the treatment planning systems are not really good at modeling those. So to make it easy, both lecta and the variant, they are using rounded so that across across the field, the penumbra is constant. So which is easy for, uh, which is easy. Therefore, this is one of the tuning parameters, especially for Eclipse, that if you don't put the right transmission factors in there, your moderate beams are, you are, you are going to get wrong doses. So uh, when you do end-to-end -end testing, especially for a VMAT and IMRT plan, this is one of the tuning factors. All right. Uh, so this is again radiation protection. The, the, during an initial radiation survey of your 
what could be five reasons why the dose is higher than expected along the primary beam? Are done with your survey and everything and uh, you have to do a survey right and you have to give a report and uh, unexpectedly readings are higher and what are some of the reasons at least five reasons uh, one reason might be like there may be a crack in the primary uh, barrier yeah yeah one more mm. Right. I think this is the, the last question we can discuss. So you, as you said, uh, uh, you know, the, the structural integrity may not be good. So there's a hole in the shielding, maybe uh, maybe your calibration of your survey meter is not good, right? That can be the cause. And uh, Linux is not calibrated as well. Because if it's a new Linux and if it's not calibrated, if it has a higher penetration, then that it can lead. And the, the, the concrete density, one of the, the parameter which defines the attenuation. And maybe the thickness of your concrete is not incorrect, it's incorrect. So these are the five, five reasons. All right. Um, I'm tired, I don't know why. So we can stop here and uh, maybe we can uh, come later on at one point. Okay, or thank you very much for playing Lord. Thank you for your time. Uh, I just want to mention uh, the other participant that uh, you all should visit the IMPCB website and uh, check the categories of uh, part three. There are five categories in which the questions will be asked and each category are uh, being heading. The title is there and uh, they also give the contents of what should be covered on uh, those categories. So be prepared for the for those categories because uh, once they start your exam, uh, there are going to be a five examiner, and each examiner will cover one category. So you have to pass uh, at least four categories, and uh, the fifth one should be uh, like fifty percent mass, I think. Then they will pass you. Uh, if they have found any discrepancy, they will uh, ask you to uh, re-exam for that one last category, I believe. This is what happened uh, with our, uh, one of the colleague. So uh, this is a recent experience that we are sharing. Okay, thank you very much, Rengor, for your time. And uh, hope to get you again in our forum. Um, maybe the subsequent of this lecture, the more questions that you will bring up for us, or maybe with another topic which you have uh, said, uh, which you have discussed with me. That one we can discuss, yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe uh, I have a recent experience of implementing SRS technique in our department. Starting from the scratch, we can discuss at one point. Okay. So all thank, right, guys. thank you all uh, for your participation. And I will share this recording on the YouTube channel so you can share with your uh, other staff and colleagues. Thank you. All right, guys. Bye. You want to stop the share?